up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 worst cards of 2020. Now 2020 wasn't exactly a great year for, um, several reasons. One of which, um, we didn't really have much Yu-Gi-Oh. With a global pandemic, it's pretty ill-advised to shove a bunch of people into one room as it is, much less a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh players that tend to have dubious personal hygiene as it is. <laughs> But it wasn't just the lack of events that sucked this year, it was also the cards. Because for every great card we got this year, we got 30 pack filler cards. So getting, uh, getting 10 for this list was actually a little difficult. Basically the rules for this list is as long as the card premiered in the TCG in the year 2020, it is fair game, as well as it is also terrible. Oh boy, you guys are in for a ride this time. I can't wait. Let's get started. Number 10 is Cupid 4! Ah, nice! It's another one of those fairy-type light monsters. Part of that, uh, fairy sports team? Basically, the team that the UAs probably just make fun of all the time. It's incredibly disrespectful! We've got Cupid Dunk and Cupid Volley, and now we got Cupid 4. And as always, it's a pretty subpar card. <laughs> This level 6 light fairy with 2200 attack, 600 defense, that's actually important. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. Has the following effect. If all monsters you control have 600 defense, minimum one, you can special summon this card from your hand. For the record, Dunk and Volley both have that 600 defense, so that's a thing. However, it doesn't specify light fairies, so that's at least interesting. Having just checked, I can assure you there is certainly a random smorgasbord of cards that have this stat. Interesting things like Tour Guide, Wind Up Rabbit, and Nibiru are a couple I'd noticed. Yeah, I don't know. I guess you're supposed to use the Dunk and the Vol- I And the reason why I say that is because it also has a second effect. Quick effect, discard one card, target one light fairy you control, and one other face-up monster on the field. The level of your monster becomes the other monster's level. That is until the end of the turn, and you can only do this once per turn. This is easily the best card on the list, hence why we put it number 10, because it is a body you can just kind of put on board. Granted, its summoning condition is weirdly specific, and the fact that it's a level 6 isn't the end of the world, because at the cost of a discard, you can modulate its level. Interestingly enough, you can modulate a different monster's level, not just itself. That's kind of neat, I suppose. But given the fact that it doesn't have much synergy with the other two, uh, it means you're probably targeting it. Also, why is this a quick effect? Like, what? why would you do this on your opponent's turn? Why would you need to? All in all, just a very strange guard. In before, Burning Abyss makes a weird deck with it. Number 9, Rain Bozu. Level 7 Light Fairy, 0 Attack, 0 Defense, Pendulum Monster, Scale 8. Ooh, Pendulums, those are always fun. They take me longer to do. The pendulum effect of our little Bozu boy. Target one face of monster you control, it gains 100 attack times the difference in the current extra deck levels. So if your opponent has 15 cards in their extra deck and you only have 10, he gets 500 attack. Okay, well, that's terrible. At least it's a scale eight. <laughs> What's its monster effect? Gains attack during your turn only, gains defense during your opponent's turn only. Weird equal to the difference in the extra deck levels times 200 this time. Okay. If this card attacks, it is changed to defense position at the end of the battle phase. If this card in a main monster zone is destroyed, you can put it in your pendulum zone. Okay, this is a lot to unpack. Mediocre attack modulation basically means that that pendulum effect is terrible. That's terrible. However, if you are running like no extra deck whatsoever and you're completely doing a main deck beatdown strategy, this thing would hit the field with uh, uh, 3,000 attack power and then switches to defense at the end of the battle phase uh, and then it has 3,000 defense on your opponent's turn. That's cute, I suppose. The problem is it is level 7. Uh, you can at least pendulum summon itself with another copy. They at least let you do that. But it is just decidedly underwhelming and frankly, uh, what year is it? Unless you're Japanese, you probably don't even know what these bozu things are, so the, the, the reference is probably lost on you, but, you know, for those in the know, that's kind of fun, I suppose. Culture-y. Decidedly, an underwhelming card. Ah, number eight. 
Continuing the lore of this little goblin kid who got a crappy Christmas present from Gift Exchange. Matching outfits. Oh, so now we know that it's his dad that got him the, the stupid t-shirt with an ancient gear on it that no one wants. Well, why are you pulling me? I'm right! At least his siblings came back for this card. That's neat. What does this normal trap card do, though? Both players reveal the top card of their deck. If they're the same type of card, monster, spell, or trap, they both add to their respective hands. If not, banish them. The best part of any bad card is its confounding card advantage. I am giving my opponent a potential plus one and going even, maybe. Worst case scenario, I'm just going minus for no reason. Ugh. It's searchable with trap trick. That's fun. Obviously the best strategy with this is somehow to be able to ensure that it goes off by using a deck that might excavate and top deck things on purpose, preferably to both players, so that you can actually make sure it works. Or you go the exact opposite route and play a cheesy mill deck and you are counting on it failing just to banish the top card of your opponent's deck um, as like another copy of Drastic Drop-Off. Oh, best case scenario, it's a bad card used in a degenerate deck that you probably wouldn't run anyway. I do like the lore though. That's cute. Not to be outdone though, number seven, Yaminbe, Yaminbe party? Yamin, Harambe party. This continuous spell card has the following effect. At the start of your battle phase, target one monster you control. This turn, your opponent chooses the attack targets for that monster. But if it attacks another attack position monster, it gains attack equal to its attack. So it basically doubles its attack power. Um, why? Why would you want to do this? I have to give it to Harambe Party. Gonna take back what you stole. Uh, it's certainly one of the weirdest effects I've ever seen on a, on a card. Um, it's a do-nothing continuous spell that allows your opponent to do one of your game actions, but why? Maybe it's just supposed to be a downside. It's not actually supposed to be a boon, because your monster's essentially doubling its attack power, and this is pretty much any monster you want. So if your opponent has limited targets on their board, I guess it's a lose-lose for them? And if your monster is inherently quite large, uh, and they only have link monsters or only attack pwned monsters, it, it, I guess it, I guess it could probably be game ending in a very niche scenario. I'm getting really worried about this little goblin kid though, like, look at this kid, he's, he's freaking emotional mess. All because his dad bought him an Ancient Gears t-shirt. Number six, one or eight. <laughs> but that's confusing as hell if you're just listening. <laughs> ah, another weird normal trap card. If your life points are lower than your opponents, reveal the top card of your deck. If it is level one or eight, hence the name, add it to your hand or special summon it. Otherwise, your opponent can apply one of these two effects. The player who activated this card's life points become 1,000. So if you were uh, just below your opponent, now you are very below your opponent. Or the opponent of the player who activated this card's life points become 8,000. So your opponent can choose to reset their life points if they want. All because you screwed up another weird top decky guess card. Okay, so again, why? The best use for this card is in a cheesy blue eyes white dragon deck because the monsters are either one or eight. Because if you're gonna be playing blue eyes, you have all these bricks as it is, you might as well play one more. <laughs> you want to do this? I have to give it credit though. It's at least kind of fun. Most of these cards are fun. They're terrible and you'll never use them and they're bad even in casual play. But hey, that's a weird card. I, again, I think its best function would be in some sort of weird degenerate strategy where you're actually trying to get it to fail. Like a weird one of those, oh, what's the name of that trap card that like life equalize, life equalizer. Maybe? That actually might be the use of the card. That's certainly not its intent, but that would be the use. <laughs> Nurse burn deck profile <laughs> when, uh, Number five is Dracoon Lamp. I love Dracoon Lamp. The artwork just screams weird pack filler card and the effect screams, where was I 15, 12 years ago? 
Dracoon Lamp is a level four fire worm monster. 500 attack, 2k defense. Once per turn, quick effect, you can discard one worm monster. This card gains 1,000 defense. Get him in damage calc. <laughs> Spike shield with chain too strong. Once per battle, during damage calc. Ooh, this one even says during damage calc. If this attack position card battles another attack position card, nice, so it's if attacked or is attacked. Quick effect, you can use this card's defense for damage calc. Oh, see, there you go. Oh, oh, oh. This level four monster is basically a normal summonable 3k beat stick. Not only that, something with like D2 shield or something, this thing's gonna be just huge. This card is gonna be huge. It's huge. But what are you gonna do with, other than big number, it, it doesn't do anything. And um, I don't know, I like this card. It's terrible, but I like this card. I, I wanna see this, I wanna see this break dual links because it just gets too big. That, that's what I want. <laughs> Number four. Linker Bell, not to be confused with Tinker Bell. <laughs> this Link to Earth Fairy with 1500 attack and <clears throat> down left, down right arrows has the following effect made of two monsters. That's generic. You cannot Link summon this Link monster. Oh boy. Unless you have three or more cards in your extra deck than your opponents. What is with this weird compare you to the size of your extra decks? in this year is why do they keep doing this obviously the awkward link summoning condition is to offset the fact this is an extremely generic link too with great arrows so for all of those decks that never got a broken link brains pack link 2 monster this is your consolation prize problem is going first turn one when you're probably doing a majority of your linky climby combo wombos uh this is gonna be actually pretty hard to accomplish because it's Pretty hard to put things into your own extra deck and take things out of your opponent's extra deck in order to force this thing to activate outside of like a pendulum deck. Replacement for Electromite, this thing is not. Its best function is like turn three when you bricked and your opponent somehow wombo comboed off but couldn't kill you somehow and now you have access to Linker Bell. Put me in the game, coach! So yeah, it's Link Rudy. The long tradition of dice-based cards having stupid dice puns for their names. Diced dice. Emphasis on stupid. What does this quick play spell do? Why do they always quick play spells with the dice cards? Duke Devlin's quick play spell deck. Roll six out of die. I mean, okay, yeah, sure. If you roll a one or a six, add a card from your deck to your hand that requires a dice roll. If you did not roll a one or a six, Roll it again, and then apply one of the following effects. One or six, return this card to your hand. <laughs> so you can't even, you can't even like get a second shot. Well, you do, but later. Two, three, four, five, place this card on the top of your deck. You can only activate dice diced once per turn. Sweet, so you can either bounce it to your hand if it flubs and uh, not use it till next turn, or you can top deck it and then not use it until next turn. I guess it's better that you got the, the, the six or one on the second try, so it at least goes back to your hand so you can then like set it and like use it during your opponent's turn because otherwise you're just drawing into another copy of this or the same copy of it next turn and that's that's not good. That's locking you into like Horn of the Unicorn levels of brick and that's unfun. I do, however, I do, however, really like the fact that it is a search card for dice cards that's also a dice card. I wish gamble cards were better in Yu-Gi-Oh! I really do. But I do like this one. I think this one's cool. It's not good. <laughs> Number two, Jack in the Hand. This normal, uh, wait. This is precisely why I stayed out of this one. I was really trying to think of a joke, but uh, thinking of one for this card was just really hard. Honestly, I think the card might come in handy. All right, fine. I'll quit jerking around and I'll just finish. Yeah. Jack in the Hand is a normal spell card that reads, reveal three level one monsters from your deck with different names. Your opponent adds one to their hand, you add one to your hand, and then you shuffle the third one back in the deck. You can only activate one of these per turn. Holy crap is that bad. Best case scenario, uh, it's a card they can't use, so it's just kind of dead in their hand. In the deck that this depicts, the ghost tricks, 
you are not going to want to give your opponent one of your ghost trick monsters. The level ones are like all hand traps, except like, what, Spectre? Uh, so like, wh And at the very least, you are giving your opponent a discard cost for like a Phoenix or a Cerberus or something that they might prob- they probably have. I can't stress this enough, giving your opponent resources is stupid. Granted, it searches like every level one in the game, and that's pretty solid, but- I, I'm pretty sure you resolve it in the order in which it says, and your opponent picks first. Ew. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. Meaning, like, you can't just leave them with the shitty, like, level one vanilla or whatever. They're gonna leave you with the shitty level one vanilla and take the best one. Or take the one that you need for your combos, because maybe they know what your deck's trying to- I'm not gonna dick around with this one anymore. All right, we do have some dishonorable mentions because like I said, there was tons of bad ones this year. First one being Bellcat Fighter. Wind Machine Link Monster. Deals with tokens. Must be for Mecha Phantom Beasts. Weird Link 3. Made of three monsters, not three plus. One of those things must be a token. All right, well, this better be good. When this card destroys a monster by battle, you can special summon a Bellcat token thing. Okay, can Mecha Phantom Beasts use this? Technically, yes. Would they want to? No. Mecha Phantom Beasts work better with their own Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. And then like, furthermore, you're gonna ask a deck that already has a problem getting off the ground. And you're gonna ask them to make a Link 3, run it into a battle, just so they can they can continue their combos in main phase two. That is sad. That's not happening. I do like the fact that it is clearly modeled after the Hellcat, but it is a Bellcat. It's a, it's a pun. Japanese would know all about the Hellcat. And the other one is Goldilocks, the Battle Landscaper. <laughs> I wish that was a made up card name because it's absurd. Furthermore, this isn't Goldilocks, the Battle Landscaper. This is Goldilocks, the Battle Landscaper. This is an immortal engine thing from that stupid movie. All right, it's a level 10 Earth Machine, so Clearly, choo-choo, go burr. If this card is normal or special summoned to a zone that's not the center main monster zone, destroy this card. This card gains 3,000 attack while in the main monster zone, which is cool because it's a couple of donuts. Once per turn, you can choose an unused main monster zone that you control, move this card to that zone, destroy every card in the column it was in, the column you moved it to, and everything in between. Yep, this card's problem-solving card text contains the phrase, all columns in between. What a strange one. It's a really weird board nuke. I love it. Trouble is, it can't put itself on board, which means you're gonna have to use something else to, to, to do it, so it's a weird card. You train players could tell me if you'd ever run it in anything. I don't think you would, but it's certainly fun. So it's a dishonorable mention, but it, it's not on the list proper. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. And our number one worst card in all of 2020, Arcana Reading. This could also be the number one scariest card released in 2020 because it alludes to the one thing Yu-Gi-Oh players will not do, and that is read. Read! Read! Yeah! Arcana? That's interesting. That almost sounds like it's an archetype-based card. Archetype-specific support is a little harder to, to accurately talk about unless you have an intricate knowledge of how the archetype works because a card might look kind of bad on the outside, but in the deck it kind of works and it's necessary and it's a necessary evil or some hooey like that. So I try to keep the archetype-specific cards to a minimum, but when I know that archetype is bad, it's clear sailing. Because all of Zawado knows that Arcana are not good. Zawado! Jojo references aside, what does this normal spell card do? Toss a coin and apply the following effect. If light barrier is on your field, you can just pick the following effect instead. I, I guess you still have to toss the coin, uh, even though you get to pick, presumably uh, to your witcher. Heads, add one card from your deck to your hand that has an effect that involves uh, coin flips, except itself, arcana reading. <laughs> That's another random effect to go search for your cards that have random effects. <laughs> nice. Nice. Time wizard too strong. 
best card 2020 confirmed. Tails. Your opponent adds one card from their deck to their hand instead. Whoa, boy. Oddly, one of the best search cards in the game, just it's for your opponent's cards instead. Add one card from their deck to their hand. No restrictions whatsoever. Yikes. You better damn well be assured that Light Barrier's on the field, which is a another card that allows you to, to cheat your coin flips. Otherwise, uh, you better hope you get heads. Okay, so I like how it lets you pick the effect with the assumption you would ever pick the Tails effect. Your opponent just gets a free thing. Why would you pick that one? You got Dark Law on the field and you want to just be a dick, I guess. But that's not all it does. You can also banish this card from your graveyard immediately after this resolves. You can normal summon an Arcana monster. Well, that's good because they like none of them like have any special summon effects. So an extra normal summon is, is pretty solid. And frankly, it's the best use of this card. You're probably just going to dump it with Foolish Battle Goods. And they had the audacity to say you can only use one of these once per turn. That's got to balance that i really love the random chance of getting my random chance cards i think that's super funny and, and you know it's pretty telling when this card can let you cheese the results of a coin flip as long as you have the other card on the field that allows you to cheese the results of a coin flip it's almost like in order to make the deck work i have to get rid of its gimmick as much as possible and just let me use the effects I want, like every other deck in the game. Ugh. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this list. I had an absolute blast with this one because these cards are all weird as f But yeah, if you think I missed a really bad card, stick it in the comments below. I am sure we will all just make fun of it there instead, instead of up here. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I will, hopefully I will see you for a better 2021. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my totally rad dueling. Watching more of these videos is almost as fine as Taya's ass? What? I'm not saying that. Fine. Then it's time to duel.